After keeping him sealed for over 7 chapters, Kishimoto brought back the plot relevance of Naruto by making him the target of an overpowered character. At first it might seem like it was done to set up a fight between Kawaki and Jura, but there is actually an even greater reason for Kishimoto to bring back the 7th Hokage that many of you must have overlooked. Aside from that, the return of Naruto could act as a huge turnover in the lives of Boruto and Kawaki. The recent chapters have teased the possibility of Kunha realizing the truth about Naruto's death, either from the mouth of Jura or Boruto himself. Now before we discuss every possible way for him to come back and change everything, let's understand the motives of Kishimoto in keeping Naruto relevant even though he has been sealed for the good. Recently, 2 Blue Vortex is dominating the number one spot on the manga websites and even its physical sales are too impressive. The 7 year long hype of the time skip was indeed worth it as the series is finally gaining the recognition that it deserved. However, in the early days of Boruto, Boruto Naruto Next Generations, every critic used to call out the show for riding on the back of the OGs. They argued the show ran on the hype of Naruto and Sasuke and its other elements were not much interesting at all. However, the recent milestones achieved by the manga has muted the mouth of those haters cause both the OGs are long gone from the story. Now even though Boruto was able to achieve so much without the hype of Naruto and Sasuke, it can't be denied that the fate of the 7th Hokage is what kept most fans hooked to the story during its initial phase. Everyone wanted to know about Kawaki, why he destroyed Konoha and if Naruto is even alive. This means the hype of the OG characters is actually enormous since they are admired by millions of fans around the world. And when you have the chance to take advantage of this edge in hyping up your manga, why won't you do that? Kishimoto knows by dropping a question mark on the fates of Naruto and Sasuke, he will attract all the OG fans who grew up watching the original series. And that's why making Naruto a target of Jura was a really smart move. But how exactly will the story play out from this point? As I said earlier, a big change in the lives of Boruto and Kawaki can only be brought through Naruto. He was the one who nourished them into the kind of people they became and not to mention the omnipotence and the fate of his son are indirectly a consequences of his own actions. If he had never adopted Kawaki, things wouldn't have gotten this bad. But now that a lot of people are having doubts about the reality and there is a group of monsters heading towards Konoha in search of Naruto, it seems like Kawaki's lies will soon get exposed. He framed the death of Naruto for his own advantage and when everyone will come to know about this, it will take him no time to switch up on the shinobi world. The main reason for him to do so is because of how big of a liability the shinobis are. They can't protect themselves from the Shinjus and Osusukis and since Kawaki only cares about Naruto, he doesn't need to have them around which explains why he would go this far after getting exposed. But what if I told you it's not just the consequences of his lies which took him this far. The present goal of Kawaki is to kill Boruto and in the future sequence, he tells him that he's going to send him to Naruto. This means either he killed Naruto or changed his mind at killing Boruto. But what if I told you he wants to kill Boruto in this sequence just because he had to kill Naruto which made him lose his mind. Now this might be a bit shocking to many of you guys but the theory which backs this possibility makes a lot of sense. So hear me out. Apparently the people associated with the color orange often turn out to be the bad guys in Naruto and Boruto. Naruto. Starting with Yahiko or Pain who has orange hair, Obito has an orange mask. Amado who could turn out to be a mastermind can be seen with orange glasses and the Shinju lady Masuri, the clone of Moegi also has orange hair. The only person who's associated with orange and is not a bad guy is Naruto. After thinking about this for quite some time, I came to realize that this orange analogy might be foreshadowing the biggest twist of the story. If Naruto gets eaten by the Shinju, it will evolve him into an evil entity who could be a threat to not only the shinobi world but the Osusuki realm as well. Mainly because he used to be the Jinchuriki of Kurama and he also possesses the chakra of the other 8 Biju. This makes him a power jackpot for Jura and if he ends up getting devoured, it will heavily impact on the ideologies of Boruto and Kawaki. With Kawaki taking the biggest step of his life by having to kill the person for whom he went so far and Boruto having to deal with all the repercussions without losing his shinobi roots. This villainous transformation of Naruto Boruto would be a game changer for the plot of Boruto. As we have seen how much of role destiny has played in the story, Naruto turning evil will prove that chaos is inevitable and a person's fate can change unexpectedly anytime. Shortly after killing Naruto's Shinju, Kawaki will go through a huge shift in mindset and his only way of life would be to chase power. By doing this, he will eventually reach a point where he would be confident in his ability to kill the whole Osusuki clan. But he will need to defeat Boruto to reach that feat. 
Queen. And as we know how plot armor works in the story, Kawaki's dream to demolish the Otsutsukis might never come true. Aside from this huge possibility of Naruto's demonic makeover, there are other subtle hints that may have been picked by Shikamaru to conclude something is weird with Kawaki. We know everyone perceives him as Boruto, so if he had lost his parents to a tragedy, he would have grieved their death and even cried a lot. However, Kawaki's reaction was completely different just because he is himself guilty of Naruto's fate. He can't fake himself to mourn Naruto's death and this hint was apparently one of the many signs which crafted Shikamaru's theory. This means Kawaki is trapped from not one but two sides. But what if I told you all his hustle to keep Naruto safe after the omnipotence incident will soon turn out to be a waste? Well, the reason for this is pretty simple. There is a chance for Naruto to not be affected by omnipotence and I'm not counting Hinata, only Naruto. It's not because they are in a separate dimension where this power failed to reach. Rather, it's due to the fact that Naruto was the subject of the omnipotence rewriting something. The divine magic could restrict rewriting the memories of the person upon whom the wish was made. In this case, it's Naruto. The reason I think it's a huge possibility is because Momoshiki mentioned the immune are the ones who suffer from omnipotence the most. This means there must have been people in the past who were also immune from this power and maybe it's because they were the subjects just like Naruto. A good example that I can think of is the Uzumaki clan. It could be that they discovered the Osusuki powers and started creating ninjutsu out of it. Even the official Naruto website has updated the meaning of ninjutsu as an attempt to replicate Shinjutsu. However, when the Osusuki gods came to know about this, they must have tried to alter the memories of the whole mankind. But just because the Uzumakis were the subjects of omnipotence here, they remained unaffected from this spell, which ended up in the Osusuki gods having no choice but to get them killed. A similar theory that I mentioned in my last video talks about the Uzumakis having a high chakra reserve, which helps them to bypass omnipotence. Someone commented on it saying Himawari is also an Uzumaki, yet she was affected by the divine magic. The thing about Himawari is that she is already being doubtful about this reality and not to mention there is some huge power hidden inside her which could be her true Uzumaki potential that could break her out of this spell. Going by this logic, Naruto being a powerful Uzumaki should be immune to omnipotence too. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. Talking about the immunity of Naruto, a thing that I can't stop thinking about is how it doesn't make that much difference whether he would be affected by this spell or not. Naruto sees both Boruto and Kawaki as his sons. They are both equal in his eyes. While there is a normal fatherly bond that he shares with Boruto, in Kawaki's case he felt the strong connection on the basis of relatability. He felt sympathy towards him because he was also a lonely kid back in the day who was seen as an outcast. Naruto knew that if Kawaki is not treated well with love and care, he could end up on a really bad path that would spoil his life. But never in his life he must have imagined that he would himself become the reason of Kawaki's villain arc. Now if we say he's about to come back someday somehow, whether it's by the process of getting unsealed or kidnapped, he would most likely forgive Kawaki for what he did, judging by how he has acted towards bad guys in the past. But the question remains, would it be justified for him to forgive his adopted son who literally stole and spoiled the life of his real son? Imagining someone in his shoes is definitely an emotional roller coaster. On one side there's your own who means the world to you and the only reason his life is being threatened is because you decided to adopt an orphan. On the other side there is this orphan who cares about nothing but you and just cause your real son could potentially harm you, he decided to go after his life and face the consequences. It would be the hardest choice for Naruto if he returns. However, just like chaos, change is also inevitable. So maybe all this build up will lead to Naruto changing his old ways. He could express his disappointment with Kawaki after realizing what his real son had to go through. And this moment could mark the time when all the efforts of Kawaki would go waste after he would decide to end his life as foreshadowed in chapter 77. But if we take this statement of Kawaki a bit too seriously, it seems like Naoto will be the one who is about to kill Kawaki for his actions. Now whether it would be done by his Shinju counterpart or not will remain a mystery for some time. If you want to know the real reason behind Salada and Sumire's immunity from omnipotence, check out the video on the right. Also don't forget to subscribe for more amazing stuff. I will see you next time.